And welcome to another Epiphany Craft Studio video. Today we are working on a commission piece. It's going to be in reds and yellows, a lot of different shades of yellow, a lot of shades of red. There's also going to be two pour cups, one that'll have all of the reds, the other will have all of the yellows. Uh, the colors scheme of red and yellow was picked by the person that I'm doing the piece for. Uh, I warned them ahead of time we may have some orange pop up just because that's what yellow and red make and they were all right with that. Canvas is probably one of the largest ones I've done, which isn't saying much because it's really not that big. It's 11 by 14. I'm going to do a traditional flip cup in the middle and then around the outside I'm going to do what I've decided to call a halo pour and the other color cup will get done as a dirty pour around it. And the hope is with using the large amount of paint I'm hoping that I won't have to tilt the canvas that much so that whatever develops in the middle and around the sides will stay instead of getting poured off trying to get the coverage. There are six different shades of red, six different shades of yellow. I have some gold, some white, some shell. None of the colors at this point have silicone in them yet. The paints have been pre-mixed a few days ahead of time. Some people say it gives a chance for the air bubbles from mixing it to kind of work their way out. That's not why I did it. It was just I had time. I did mix the paint up and then when I had time to do the pour and record, that's when I did it. I'm going to start with a little bit of the shell and then we're going to do all the yellows first. All of the paints pretty much either have glitter or some sort of metallic or mica powder in them just to help give it a little extra shine which is hard to pick up on the camera. And really no rhyme or reason in how the colors were added to the cup. It's just what I grabbed and poured in. Giving each a little stir to make sure that the consistencies are good because again they had been sitting for a couple of days. And I may have actually put silicone in when I mixed them up so I was probably trying to get the silicone back to not just sitting on top. Going to add in some gold to the yellow just to give it a little extra bling. And here I'm adding a little extra silicone to that one because the gold tends to be a little aggressive so that's hoping that with the silicone added it'll help allow the other colors to come and rise above the gold. Same with the shell. And if you're wondering, yes, that is an actual 16 ounce cup that is almost full. 
with pink. And I'm showing the pendant because that is what you can do with all the paint skin after you're done. You can take and cut it down, put it into a bezel, and then use some clear resin to go over top of it, which helps give it like a third dimension. So while the paint may not actually be on the canvas, it's not being totally wasted either. And now the same routine to get the reds into the cup. And all of these paints are bare house paints with blow trawl and water to get it to the right consistency. And again, glitter, mica powder, not that they make a difference as to what the consistency is, but it does help give it a little extra bling. Alright, the Trusty Art Bitch is off cleaning the containers, and yes, he chose that nickname. Leveling the canvas, making sure that I'm not going to have paint running off in one direction. Using a paint stir stick to prop up the one corner, adding an additional cup or two to bring up that side. Now that it's level, we're going to get to the port. And yes, I have issues flipping it when it's big stuff like this, so trust the art bitch to the rescue. And here we go with the halo.
and the weight of the paint in the middle of the canvas is pulling it down. Then we had suction. Never a good thing. And still had to tilt. Not too incredibly much, but still. It, w it didn't quite do what I wanted to do. The reason um, pouring it back the other way is it was still a little too red on that one side and I'm trying to get rid of, at this point with the paint being wet, the very late blob down now in the left hand corner. It to me looked like a egg. This is the cells I had before I even hit it with a torch. Now I'm hitting it with the torch. I sent pictures of this with the paint wet and once the paint was dry to the person who commissioned the piece and they were tickled with it. So luckily it's a done deal and didn't waste <laughs> 32 ounces of paint. And as you can tell I'm sitting there looking at it because I am not happy with it and I think it's mainly because it's not my colors of choice. I'm not a fan of red and I'm not a fan of yellow. So I'm trying to get some sort of break in some of this red because it's just you know, just not happy with it because again not my colors. And from the camera it's hard to tell just exactly how that looks using the stick. But in person, it really does make a difference, kind of pulling some of that yellow into the red. <music> Trying to make sure I got all of the air bubbles out. And yes, that is the art inspector walking back behind me. And there I actually pulled some of the red into the lighter yellow blob that was in that corner. Trying to get that to break up a little bit. It helped and it looked better. That area looks much better now that it's dry. When it was wet, I was really unhappy with it. If it wouldn't have been so much paint, I probably would have scrapped it and redone it. But I figured, let me send pictures, get feedback from the customer, and they were happy. So, who am I to argue, right? Thanks for joining me and we will put some finished pictures at the end of the video and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and we'll see you soon with a new video and more paint being poured around. Take care.
Hi, my name is Lucy. Please give my mommy a thumbs up. If you do, I'll give you kisses. Go ahead, do it. There you go.